Hi everybody and welcome to part 2 of my uh, PS1 collection and uh, we covered quite a few games in the first part and uh, <laughs> it's a pretty long, pretty long part, of, sorry about that uh, but we've got uh, another 24 games here so um, this part will be shorter plus um, I get a little bit more time to talk about each game so let's get started with Medieval uh, this is a third person action game uh, from Cambridge Studios, who also made uh, both Primal and Ghost Hunter on the PS2. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good game. It's um, uh, it's very sort of pick up and play. Uh, it's it's very got it's very simple combat, you know. But um, it's fun at the same time. You got uh, weapons you can unlock. And uh, certain different areas you can go to, and it's um, it's a really fun game. Um, really interesting premise where you play as a guy who's uh, leading this battle and gets killed by the first arrow <laughs> that's shot at him, and uh, wakes up a hundred years later and tries to save um, this lad basically. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, I I've only played the first couple of levels unfortunately because my disc is a little. A little bit faulty, but um, so far I'm liking it. I know there's a sequel as well, but unfortunately I don't have that one yet. Uh, next up we have Klonoa, Daughter of Phantom Isle. Uh, this is a 2D or 2.5D uh, platform game, and uh, uh, you play as Klonoa and uh, the uh, the actual game is kind of interesting, where you don't really sort of jump on enemies or uh, have a certain attack. You sort of grab enemies uh, in which they inflate, and then you sort of throw them either at other enemies um, on the same two that you're playing as you on on in like the background. Hence, like the two point five D uh, mechanic, and um, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's uh, not as uh, easy as it looks, trust me. <laughs> it look it might look all cutesy and fun and uh, quite simple, but um, uh, Kirby Kirby's epic yarn it is not. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, I've I've got games on this uh, video right now that I found a lot easier than this one, but uh, it's still very good. I've played the first three worlds and uh, yeah, it's good so far. Uh, next up, we have. ISS IS Pro Evolution 2 as a football game obviously I like football as you can tell um, but yeah this was for me on the PS1 front it was like the best uh, game in the series it was like the most evolved you know no pun intended and um, yes I still sort of play it now and again obviously it's a lot primitive compared to like the football games now but um, yeah it's still fun uh, next up we have uh, the Raiden Project, or the Raiden Project. Um, unfortunately this is the only game where I don't have the back cover. Um, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> and unfortunately uh, it's also one of the more rarer games in my collection, hence why I'm sort of frustrated that it doesn't have a back cover. Uh, but this is a uh, vertical uh, shoot em up or smup. And um, yeah, it's it's not bad. It's not... Uh, Smups aren't really my cup of tea, but um, I, I got this along with a lot of the other games that you've seen in the previous video at, at the launch of uh, the PS... well, a year after the launch of the PS1, and um, my parents got really lo loads of games like Tekken 2 and um, Loaded and stuff like that for Christmas, and uh, this was one of them, and um, yeah, it's okay, it's not, as I said, it's not a genre that I'm too fond of though. Uh, next up we have Driver 1 and Driver 2. Now, um, I've watched my friends play a uh, play through a lot of the levels of Driver 1 and um, I'd love to too, but unfortunately I can never get past the tutorial level. <laughs> and I know that a lot of people out there will um, will share my pain and it's I don't, I don't know what they were thinking with that. It's just so ridiculous that you have to do this tutorial like perfectly in order to progress I don't know why they couldn't have just like um, had you do like certain things 
one thing at a time and then and then progress rather than do them all at once um for a time limit but um yeah from what i see the game is actually pretty decent uh driver 2 on the flip side i have not beaten but i got to the last level um where you have to like tail tail a helicopter and um i can never beat it mind you i was quite young at the time um but yeah, it's a really good game. Uh, the on-foot sections are a little bit ropey, even back then, uh, even worse so now. Um, but the driving is good. The missions, you know, uh, very challenging, but um, they're still very fun as well. And uh, until San Francisco, San Francisco came along, this is probably my favourite game in the series. But um, it's still it's still one of my favourites nonetheless. So. Right, next up we have International Track and Field. Uh, this is um, a four-player um, button measure, similar to like Mario Party, I guess. Um, and you're playing like certain athletic events, like the 100 meter sprint, uh, 110 meter hurdles, hammer throw, uh, javelin, uh, swimming. High jump, which was impossible. Pole vaulting, which was impossible. <laughs> uh, what, else, what else was there? I think there was um, discus as well. Yeah, I think that was one. Oh no, it was a uh, shot put. Yeah, it was shot put. Yeah. Um, actually, I think they might have both been in there. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was uh, great fun if you had like uh, uh, friends who had like a PS One as well, and you wanted to do like multiplayer, and uh, uh, definitely. Um, Great use of the multi tap. Um, your hands would be, <laughs> your fingers would be absolutely destroyed by the end of even like one session of this game, but um, it was so worth it just for the um, amount of fun you could have with it. Uh, next up, we have Gran Turismo 2. Uh, it's obviously a very uh, popular and successful uh, long running uh, driving simulator game. Uh, this, I mean, I, I do prefer G, uh, Gran Turismo 3 out of all of them, uh, but that's just me. Uh, but I thought I'd get this one because it's, you know, uh, the, uh, the sort of peak of, like, the uh, capabilities that they, they could get with the PS1. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not, again, it's not a genre that I'm really all that fond of, but... Um, I do, I do like to pop it in now again, just uh, try and see if I can get better at it. Okay, and next up we have Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto London. And Grand Theft Auto 2. Now, for those who don't know, uh, GTA London was actually a... Uh, spin-off of or it's actually I think it was GTA London 1969 uh, but it was like a spin-off to like the first game uh, before like they released the second one and um, yeah each of these are uh, very different from like uh, today's uh, GTA uh, which is like a 3d um, uh, action open world game uh, this is still open world however this is a 2d uh, top-down um, open world game. Uh, if you've ever played a game recently called Retro City Rampage, it's pretty much um, uh, it, it takes the inspiration from these games uh, into that game, uh, albeit with like uh, its own like references from the eighties and that. Um, but yeah, I've I've it's it's a series that I've I've watched like friends play and uh, uh, not. Uh, ones that I played myself, I I did buy them fairly cheaply. Um, I mean, like GCL and I got from Oxfam for like a quid. So, um, but yeah, it's it's one uh, like part of the series I want to explore and see if um, it's worth going back to. So um, yeah, it's it's one thing that I I look I look forward to go back to it uh, one day and see uh, how it holds up to, compared to uh, today's standards. Uh, next up, my most recent uh, PS1 purchase, which is uh, The Adventures of Lundra. Uh, this is a 2D uh, RPG similar. 
it's very similar um obviously you can see the pictures here uh, very similar to that of um uh, legend of zelda link to the past on the super nintendo and uh for me, if you're looking for something like that on the PS1, I think this is the closest that you're going to get. Um, it has the same uh, sort of uh, open world uh, like uh, combat uh, rather than sort of turn based, which you saw for a lot of uh, RPGs um, on the PS1. And um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting story. You sort of go to sleep and you have like these uh, visions or premonitions of what. Uh, what's going to happen and uh, you get sort of clues on uh, puzzles that you've yet to solve and uh, but you will do it at some point and um, yeah it's a pretty cool um, cool mechanic and uh, it's one that I want to play more of and uh, try and uh, get through as much as possible without like resorting to like FAQs or YouTube because um, yeah it's, it's a it's a challenging game like uh, mentally but um with the puzzles and whatnot, but um, yeah, it's still it's still very fun. Uh, next we have Silent Hill, and God, I need to replace these cases. <laughs> They're so fragile. Um, this is a survival horror game. This is basically Konami's response to um, uh, Capcom Capcom's Resident Evil series, and um, in many ways, it's um, it's better. Uh, in terms of like, because uh, Resident Evil was um, very jump scare based, where well, this is very um, uh, psychological, um, and it sort of really messes uh, with your head at times, and um, there's sort of uh, like secret meanings of certain uh, like bosses you fight um, more more so in the second game. Uh, than this one, but uh, there's still really there's still moments where you're just like what the hell's going on, and um, there's a lot of uh, endings to this game, uh, uh, one of which is canon. Some of it's just like there for fun, and uh, I was like really sort of messed up as well. Um, so yeah, there's definitely uh, replay value there. Uh, the, some of the puzzles are a little bit cryptic. Um, and you probably will have to sort of look up how to do them, like the uh, the piano one and uh, uh, the one with oh, what was it? The one with the wall, uh, like plaques or something that you had to put in certain places. I can't remember that one, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a really interesting game. You play as um, uh, Harry, I think it's Harry Mason, and you're looking for your daughter Cher Cheryl, and. Um, yeah, depending on your actions, uh, you can determine what ending you get, so, yeah. Uh, next up, a game that I actually played um, a lot on the PC back in the day. I, I'm not much of a PC gamer, but at this at this point in time I was, and uh, I found that there was a PS1 version, so I thought I'd pick it up, and that's Theme Hospital. Uh, this is a isometric um, uh, sort of... Uh, puzzle game, I guess, where you uh, run a hosp hospital and uh, you have to set certain uh, targets in order to progress to uh, new levels. Um, and uh, d during the game, you have to uh, like build certain parts of the hospital in order to um, to please like the uh, uh, the sort of customers and the staff and. Uh, uh, you get certain diagno uh, diagnoses, um, diagnostics, I guess. <laughs> uh, you get like people with giant like heads, and you have to um, uh, have like this machine on to shrink it down normal size. And sometimes, uh, if you don't ma manage your um, equipment and get like um, janitors to fix them, uh, they, they those sort of big heads that just blow up. <laughs> they die. Just um, really brutal at <laughs> times, but so funny. Um, but yeah, really, really fun game. Um, not the longest, but um, it's fairly challenging in places. And uh, yeah, the music is good. I, lo I love the um, uh, the voice of the secretary as well. It's just so um, <laughs> it's just so charming to hear all the time. So yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Die Hard trilogy. Uh, this comes with uh, three games. Uh, the first Die Hard, which is a third-person shooter. Um, Die Hard 2, Die Harder, which is a um, 
light gun game similar to Time Crisis and Die Hard with a Vengeance, which is like um, uh, what I describe as crazy taxi with, uh, with bombs, basically. <laughs> uh, you have to get to um, uh, certain points of the map um, in a certain amount of time in order to um, uh, defuse like these bombs, even though they still blow up for some reason. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's a pretty good package. Um, obviously, with a lot of modern TVs now, you can't you sort of struggle to play uh, the second game with um, a light gun. But uh, you can still play it with the controls if you wish, and um, it's you know it, it works. It's not perfect, but it you know it works. So, uh, but yeah, it's a pretty decent collection of uh, games, and uh, yeah, it'll keep you occupied for a little while. It's yeah, it's not bad. Uh, next up, I've got Tenu, Tenchu uh, Stealth Assassin. Well, I can't even speak today. Tenchu Stealth Assassins. Um, uh, now this is another purchase I bought from Oxfam for like one pound fifty. And um, yeah, I really like this series. I've got uh, Wrath of Heaven and uh, the other one, which name escapes me on the PS2. And I've also got Tenchu Z on the 360. Um, I don't have the sequel to this on the PS1, but uh, that's one I'm sort of looking to get at some point. And these are basically third-person stealth games. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, 1998. So I think it might have been before uh, Metal Gear Solid. So yeah, and you play as a, uh, a ninja called uh, Ricky Maru, and uh, you actually can play as. Uh, uh, Yami, who's uh, another character, but uh, Rik Rikimaru is the sort of iconic character of the series, and um, the one I'd usually play as. And uh, yeah, it's like as as a third person self game, and the better you do um, at self, the more uh, like the better the score that you get overall in the end. And yeah, it's a really really uh, entertaining series, and. Uh, I'd like to see it come back at some point because um, I know uh, From Software worked on it. Um, I know the last Tenchu game, Tenchu Z, and uh, yeah, I'd love to see it come back one day. Uh, next up, we have Pref the Rapper. Uh, now, ev everyone loves this game. <laughs> um, but yeah, you play as a rapping dog uh, who tries to uh, impress. Um, uh, this girl called Sunny, and uh, you have to, you want to sort of get stronger, so you end up uh, j uh, joining this uh, karate club uh, with a, uh, a ma <laughs> uh, like karate master who's also a onion, <laughs> and, um, and then you try and get a license, so you end up uh, having a driving instructor who's also a moose. Um, uh, then you try to uh, get the money to fix uh, your dad's car, <laughs> which you end up breaking. Uh, so you uh, end up uh, trying to sell stuff with this um, Rastafarian frog, <laughs> as you do. And um, but yeah, there's uh, six stages in total. I've gotten to the fifth stage where you end up um, uh, rapping against all of uh, the people you've met before in this game uh, to go to the toilet and um, I don't know why but the chicken I, I hate the chicken in this game just the the level itself where you have to bake a cake is just a nightmare but the section near the end of level five where you have to um, uh, get your score up to good in order to progress to the final level is just I, I just can't do it I just can't do it, but um, it's really fun. There's a lot. All the uh, music in this game is just classic, and um, uh, some of the dialogue's hilarious as well. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's it's one of the most iconic series on the PlayStation, and um, I highly recommend it if you've not played it before. Uh, next up, we have Parasite Eve Two. Um, it's really weird. We didn't actually get the first Parasite Eve over here in Europe which just to this day absolutely baffles me yet we get the sequel for some reason um i mean if <laughs> if square enix are going to remake a game um i mean i'm happy that final fantasy 7 is finally getting, getting a remake but please remake parasite even like bring it to europe you know that would just make my dreams come true uh but this uh you play as uh Ayabrea, 
and uh, this sort of follows the off the events of the first game. Uh, again, being from Europe, we have no idea where this leads off, but anyway. Um, and it's it's sort of like um, it is survival horror, but there's also elements of um, there's also RPG elements in the game as well, where you um, aim your gun and like you. If if you're close enough, you can get a good hit. If you're too far away, then um, you're not going to do as much damage with that weapon. And you can sort of uh, upgrade certain weapons as well to make them stronger. And uh, there's some really sort of fucked up enemies that sort of um, uh, mutate because of uh, the sort of mic my, uh, mitochondria. <laughs> Sorry if I spelled that wrong. Um, but yeah, it's a really good... Um, really good series unfortunately again we didn't get the first one but um uh i i would love to see that come out, out over here at some point um and you know maybe even like bundle like both together you know um even like digitally i'd take that um but yeah even, even so on its own parasite eve 2 is um a very good uh third person action game uh, next up, we have Buster Groove. Uh, very similar to uh, Paraf the Rapper. Uh, only difference is with uh, Paraf the Rapper, you had to sort of do like uh, Simon Says, where you have to sort of repeat the uh, the button prompts uh, that you were given by uh, uh, the other characters. Uh, with this one, uh, what happens is you basically have to tap uh, the buttons to a rhythm. Uh, the a sort of like tap the buttons to the rhythm of the song itself, and um, yeah, it was really unique uh, compared to a lot of the other games um, like this, like Parappa Rapper and Jam and Abbey uh, Vib Ribbon and stuff. And uh, that's why I liked it so much. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you have a variety of different characters. Um, my personal favourite was um, was uh, Heat. I thought, uh, but there's like several different characters all with their own song and uh, all of them are just well the majority of the songs are, are fantastic there's some really sort of weird ones here and there but uh, for the most part the soundtrack is superb and uh, I highly recommend uh, checking it down if you find it mm. it's quite pricey though so um, just be warned uh, next up we have Incredible Crisis uh, this is a sort of uh, party game, so, sort of like uh, games like Mario Party, I guess, um, where you play as certain members of uh, this of this family, and uh, you, ha you all have sort of certain objectives. Like uh, the main character you see here, um, you start off with him, and uh, you have to sort of uh, try and. Uh, <laughs> get get out of work and sort of run away from uh, uh, boulders like uh, tightrope across a uh, a uh, a pole on on this like tall building. Um, uh, <laughs> try and avoid traffic while uh, oncoming traffic while uh, riding around on a stretcher. Like it's just, <laughs> it's just absolutely insane, but. Um, uh, but while while it lasts, it's a really it's really really fun. There's around like twenty four levels or something, so it's um it's not the longest game, but uh, there's certainly a lot of challenge, uh, especially later on. There's some ones that I'm just like, how the hell do you do that? Um, but yeah, it's a really really fun uh, fun game and definitely worth experiencing at least once. Okay, the final four games. First, we have Destruction Derby. And Destruction Derby 2. Uh, the first one was another game that I got uh, with my original PS1. And um, yeah, it was okay. It wasn't um, quite as extreme as like the second game. Um, however, I felt that the um, gameplay mechanics were a lot fairer than the second game personally. But um, yeah, and, and the, it was a very sort of safe start. To um to the series, uh, basically you can do either stock car racing or destruct the destruction derby event itself, where you take out all the cars and try and uh, survive yourself. What I would do 
<laughs> it's a sort of very pussy uh, tactic where you'd sort of drive around and wait for everyone else to sort of take each other out and then try and uh, uh, take out the, the, the sort of uh, leftovers, basically. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. Uh, the second game, I felt that the... Um, they definitely got the speed and the... Um, the feel of like um, this like stream sort of car car racing sport right um, however the AI is like unforgivably tough like once you uh, lose first place you can sort of never get it back and uh, you can sort of never get like the place that you've earned back like you sort of mess up once and then it's like over basically which is kind of um, kind of dumb but the reason I kept this was because of the, uh, the the destruction derby events themselves. Like there's one where you drive through like into the middle of the bowl and then you just like fly up in the air like 30 or 40 foot in the air. It's just insane. And there's one where um, there's like a there's like the uh, the area itself and there's like a a ditch like right at the end and you just sort of fall down into oblivion. It's just so much fun. And um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's not the best. They aren't the best games in the world, but um, they have, they hold great nostalgia for me, and that's why I like them so much. Okay, the next game is Ape Escape. Uh, now, this was like the first game where you had to use the uh, analog PS One controls, uh, and with good reason because um, you basically. In this game, you play as Spike, and you have several different uh, gadgets like a um, uh, a baton, a net, a sort of uh, a sort of fan with which, like, if you turn the rotate the analog stick, and you sort of, as you jump, you can sort of float in the air, uh, Rayman style. Uh, you had like a toy car with which you could um, drive it through these like small gaps in order to press a button to progress further. And various different other ones. I think you had like the boxing glove as well, which basically uh, um, takes out any of the monkeys out in like one hit and stuns. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it, it's a really really fun game. Um, it's ba it's a uh, third person like flat platform world with um, uh, the aim to is to like basically collect all these uh, monkeys in order to re uh, restore the. Um, uh, balance of power uh, between uh, like good and evil, you know. <laughs> and, uh, it's sort of uh, um, a lead monkey, sort of you know, set all these uh, other monkeys free and uh, sort of like causing havoc across the world. And you basically have to catch them all. Um, now, you don't have to necessarily get all the monkeys to um, to sort of beat the game. Uh, or get to the final boss, but in order to get like the true ending, you have to uh, go back and get all of them. And there's a, a lot of scenarios where you have to go back to the world um, until you, once you get the right gadget, and then you can take take out those monkeys. And uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. It, it does add a little bit of longevity to it. And um, yeah, it's definitely one of my favourite games on the PS One. And finally, uh, saving the best to last, um, a game that everyone who has a PS1 or has a PS1 collection has to own this game. It's um, it's pretty much the law, <laughs> and that is of course Metal Gear Solid, one of the finest games that I've ever played. Not just on the PS1, but um, as a gamer in general. Just it. <sighs> It defines so many um, uh, parts about gaming: the uh, the storytelling, the cinematics, um, the the gameplay. E even though it's by today's standards, um, not quite as great now, but um, it still it still holds up, and you can still have fun with it. Um, the the pacing as well; it was just absolutely perfect. Every um, <clears throat> Every boss had its own, um, like time time of which to um, t 
tell tell the the gamer like about themselves and why they 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 they're sort of working to, together to uh, take over the world. And um, yeah, it's it's a third person stealth game, um, but you aren't sort of restricted to um, being stealthy. It does help if you are, but uh, even if, even if you're not, you do have enough. Um, uh, weaponry and the ammo with which to um to get through the game at least um and the <laughs> sort of little uh secrets and stuff where like for example you have to find out a certain number of which to call one of the characters in the game and but you you don't know how exactly it just tells you to look at the back of the box and you you, you sort of reach a blank you're thinking what do they mean by back of the box and you're like oh that number on the back of the box and it's just little things like that that make this game uh, such a one <laughs> such a masterpiece and such a wonder to play um it does also come with um the uh, demo for silent hill as well uh so even if you didn't didn't own silent hill and wanted to sort of have a taste of of that game uh, you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, Melga Side, one of the finest games I've ever played. Um, one of my favorite, favorite games of all time. Um, is it my favorite Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear game, I guess? Um, tough to say, because for me, the first one and three are both on par with each other. Uh, the third game, mainly because of the fact that you uh, have, like, you sort of discover the origins of... Um, of uh, Solid, Sk Solid Snake and you play as his dad uh, boss and uh, that's an amazing story too but um, yeah Metal Gear Solid one, one of the best games I've ever played so yeah. okay and that's it for my uh, PS1 collection uh, 2015 edition um, I hope you enjoyed it um, <laughs> I certainly did uh, enjoy like, coming back to all these games and talking about them uh, it brings back so many memories um from like 20 years, like almost 20 years ago. So uh, yeah, thank you very much everyone for watching and I will see you next time. Take care everyone, bye bye.